research and advanced activity and uh, the objectives of the research and advanced activity are to look beyond the current market conditions and forecast what consumers and what the company might need 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now. And uh, we saw fuel prices uh, continuing to increase, both in the short term as well as the long term. And um, we're investing in uh, basically uh, new technologies to improve fuel economy, while at the same time uh, maintain the attributes that consumers want uh, in today's market. Mm -hmm. um, so the EcoBoost uh, project was started um, basically forecasting higher fuel prices, but also forecasting that consumers would want to give up the attributes of power and performance um, in the short term. And it seems like the sort of the, the heart of at least the engine aspect of EcoBoost, mm -hmm. because the way I understand EcoBoost, it's not just had, doesn't just have to do with the engine; it has to do with the vehicles, the other systems that can be made lighter weight, etc. Um, but the engine side, sort of the, the genesis of the idea, is that you have the turbochargers, you have the direct injection. Was that kind of where you started from, or was that something that came later in the process? It, it was the starting point. Um, Ford has, um, over the last 10 to 15 years, done a lot of development work on uh, direct injection fuel systems and turbochargers, um, both local here in Durham, as well as Ford of Europe, Volvo, and Mazda brands within the Ford umbrella. And um, we recognize the, the synergy of those two technologies as an opportunity to enhance fuel economy, while at the same time enhancing the, the drivability of the powertrain. And uh, saw an opportunity in the short term to offer that consumers uh, with the EcoBoost program. It's also been very exciting to see consumers' um, uh, interest in the technology and the fuel economy change just in the last few years, naturally, as a result of higher fuel prices. Uh, the project started with um, interest at the, uh, at the corporate level, but now has a uh, very strong interest at the consumer level because of uh, the rapid change in uh, market fuel prices. So Ford has always been very consumer focused and consumers for many, many years wanted uh, large displacement V8 engines, large vehicles, um, but the external environment changed very quickly and fortunately Ford has prepared, um, for example, the EcoBoost uh, technology to be able to address those relatively quick changes in the external factors which drive very quick changes in customer preference and buying behavior. Mm -hmm. the well, in the presentation that you gave us, the nice long one that I didn't, didn't put on film, okay. uh, you talked a lot about the similarities and differences between the EcoBoost engine, which is 3.5 liter, and the standard 3.5 liter. Can you give us a condensed version of that for, for the people watching? What, what's the same, what's different about this engine and what sure. they might be used to? Sure, the 3.5 um, the liter V6 EcoBoost engine um, is derived from the current 3.5 liter V6 Duratec engine, which is currently available in the Edge, the Taurus, the Flex, and a variety of other Ford uh, Trustmark applications. Um, what we've done to develop into an EcoBoost engine is added a direct injection fuel system and twin turbocharging. Uh, those are the two key technologies which make it an EcoBoost. And along with those two technologies were um, additional changes to the cylinder head architecture, uh, cylinder block architecture to ensure that the engine um, could accommodate the higher specific output and be durable over the long term. In terms of power and performance, so we have 340 horsepower and 340 pound-foot of torque on the 3.5 liter EcoBoost V6 engine. Uh, compare that to the base V6, which is typically about 265 horsepower and about 265 pound-foot of torque. Um, so it's a significant improvement in terms of the performance, and we expect the fuel economy of the EcoBoost V6 to match the fuel economy of the base V6. Um, so you can have a premium engine without a penalty in fuel economy. Um, compare that to the previous uh, V8 options, which would also give you more performance, but the greater fuel economy at the same time. And uh, Ford has announced uh, that we're going to be offering four cylinder EcoBoost options in the future. Um, and those could, for example, replace V6 mm -hmm. um, as the standard engine. What um, can you can you imagine? What would be the most optimal, uh, just the optimal um, setup to get the highest fuel economy out of an EcoBoost style engine? It would be similar to this in terms of a, a high pressure direct injection fuel system. Um, a four cylinder engine would typically require only one turbocharger instead of two, um, and still deliver very good transient response. Um, you could potentially downsize the engine anywhere between one and a half and two and a half liters and still deliver uh, the performance of a larger V6 engine uh, and perhaps even improve vehicle level performance. Mm -hmm. And you were talking some of that, um, the, the same rate of, of uh, performance using f the V8 performance of the V6 mm -hmm. fuel economy in, in general, 
is the way that the fuel is injected. And you talked about that it's on the two different parts of the stroke, that it's so fine, and that it has the little ski jump thing. Can you kind of talk mm -hmm. about that? So I think that would be also an interesting thing for uh, sure. auto blood readers to see. Sure, one of the uh, benefits of uh, combining turbocharging and direct injection together is that um, uh, we are able to use the direct injection fuel system to overcome some of the uh, emissions challenges associated with turbocharging. So uh, the key is to be able to heat the catalyst up as quickly as possible at cold start conditions the direct injection fuel system allows us to uh, implement what we call split injection during the cold start process, um, which uh, utilizes a very specific feature in the piston bowl to allow very retarded spark time and hence very high heat flux through the exhaust to the catalyst under cold start. Um, so that uh, technology combination of direct injection and turbocharging could be applied to a V6 or a four-cylinder application to deliver those same benefits in terms of reducing cold start emissions which uh, would enable us to meet uh, more stringent fuel excuse me, emission standards in the future. And we have uh, literally hundreds of, of engines that have been built that have been used both in terms of uh, dynamometer-based um, um, experimentation and testing um, by dynamometer I and mean laboratory-based uh, experiment, experimentation and testing, then also uh, many vehicles, um, over 100 vehicles have been built um, uh, and have been used on road for Various, various aspects of development, uh, durability, fuel economy, emissions, um, ride handling dynamics, etc. So all aspects of the vehicle program, um, the engine or the powertrain has participated in uh, over the course of the program. So those vehicles have been running for actually several years now, um, and, uh, preceded by engine development work also. Mm -hmm. uh, my last question is sort of about the general mindset um, I remember when Ford announced the EcoBoost, the idea was that, well, it's certainly not hydrogen fuel cells, it's not battery-powered vehicles, but it's something that we know how to do, and it's going to be able to implement it soon. We're going to be able to get it into production vehicles much quicker than all these other technologies that are for, for the And of course, Ford is working on those as well. But um, how, did, how did that sort of idea that you want to get it into production as quickly as possible um, affect you as you're working on these vehicles in the lab, and because this is a real, real world, you know, application mm -hmm. that you're designing and that you were helping to build. So, it is. It, it um, I would say that um, that approach greatly uh, accelerated the, uh, the project um, in terms of uh, both the pool inside the organization as well as the pool from the customer. So, um, we quickly found that when customers drove the vehicle, they really appreciated the driving dynamics of the EcoBoost engine, um, and when presented with the fuel economy benefit. And um, basically, the payback cycle were very favorable in the technology. We saw it as an opportunity to really introduce new technology very quickly that have a very meaningful impact on a CO2 global basis um, and on a you know, local pocketbook basis uh, that we think customers will respond to very quickly. So, it had a very dramatic impact on the, uh, the um, interest level and uh, execution of the project. All right, cool. Thank you very much. Thank you. Just, uh, project.